T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Midheaven podcast where we assess the cosmos for oh. you. This is, of course, your host, Hermes and Hades, right here. Yeah. And uh, we're going to illuminate the collective consciousness as we always do. Uh, just horror movie edition. <laughs> right? This whole like month <laughs> is like squares. horror movie edition. It's oh, yeah. very appropriate for the month of October. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. I don't know if I want to <laughs> celebrate or if I want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Because part of me is like, woo, it's almost over. But then the other part of me is like, fuck. It's like the third final, I guess like the, the fourth square that's really kind of coming up. So, the fourth um, final. Yeah, so we're seeing like the the return and the final Saturn Uranus square that's taking place over this next month. So Saturn's been in Aquarius uh, really since 2020. If we look back on uh, three separate dates um, in you know I think it was February, June, and December of 2021, we saw Saturn in Aquarius square with Uranus in Taurus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we want to reflect on that. We want to talk about like what's really happened since those squares have taken place, yeah. how it's affected us uh, collectively, and just some of our hot takes on what might be in store for the last Saturn Uranus square. I should note it's not exact, um, but like that's just splitting hairs. We're not the astrology podcast. So Saturn and Uranus are in a square. They're in a square at 18 degrees, but it will not be exact squares per the same minute mm-hmm. um, as we saw in 2021. Uh, but this will be taking place at 18 degrees of Aquarius and 18 degrees of Taurus. So if you have any planets between 16 and 20 degrees of the fixed signs, uh, take cover. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> duck, duck and cover. Um, let me take you guys back to um, the very first Do square. You remember the time? I know. The last time Saturn was in Aquarius, it was 91, and Uranus was 12th house to it. So now it's back, and Uranus is 4th house to it. And that 12th to 4th house pipeline is the extra expression or the talented expression of a deeper understanding of collective concepts that people individually are experiencing if you think the 90s we didn't have smartphones now we have smartphones so we're understanding how to integrate that and woo, yeah seven degrees so take you guys back to mid-february of 2021 this was the very first time that we saw saturn and aquarius coming into a square with uranus and taurus Um, in recent years, Mm. happening at seven degrees. And um, both planets were direct, so that's worth mentioning. As we go through this, we'll talk a little bit about when they're retrograde or when they're um, direct. It's hard to forget this time. Was that the Wall Street bets? In the beginning of February? Well, did that happen around then or later? Uh, That's a good question, I don't know. I didn't really follow I think it was later. I think it was later with the other squares, but it was setting the stage for it. And you're absolutely right. This was the year we had the, this was after January when Mars entered Taurus and we had the Capitol riots. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we started to settle into this new uh, pandemic, pandemic reality. Also, which year was it that we had all of like the stuff that was going on with like, wasn't this right when like the AMC stuff happened? And right. Yeah, yeah. So it was all that stuff. Yeah. It was AMC and like all of the other stocks, the stocks that they were basically yeah. like pumping, you know? And we saw like groups of people coming together collectively. I mean, how can you not forget? This is also like our anniversary. This is yes. this is what gave birth to the Midheaven podcast, which yeah, was in <laughs> was in like February, uh, going into March of twenty twenty one. I know it was Aquarius season. So It's hard for me to forget this time. I mean, Saturn was in Aquarius, Jupiter was in Aquarius, Mercury was there, Venus was there, and um, it was definitely about relationships and partnerships, I think, for sure, out of seven. Yeah. How do you, like, sum up the Saturn square Uranus, like, archetype? Like, how do you, how would you explain that to, like, a kindergartner? That's a good question. I think, that's a really good question. I think at one level, without being too verbose, it's like innovation at the cost or sacrifice of freedom or creating freedom by sacrificing advancement. 
So the way this square looks like to me, right? You have someone who has a smartphone. They are connected to all the mainstream outlets in the world. They're up to date with all the flyest narratives. They have all the most advanced technology. Their food is not real. Then you have <laughs> Uranus and Taurus, someone who's in an Amish farm. All their food is real. They grow all their food. You know what I mean? Like they don't have technology. So who's more advanced, the Aquarian or the Taurian? And given that things are moving towards Taurus, it's almost as if even though Taurus is at that lower level and not as advanced, they're moving forward because they have more autonomy and independence. So we see all these themes here. You know, we see we see Saturn having to bring collective regulation for crypto and, and means that individuals can be free. But we also see Saturn trying to overregulate and chomp down, which now pushes Uranus to innovate against that. Uranus, which is out of this world, and also after Saturn, which are like loopholes and reality hacks like the AMC and other such stuff. So I really love seeing the AMC here because that let us know that something on a big scale like yeah. this is destined to happen where it's not just a two week thing. It could be hacking. Yeah. Like you said. Well, so. it's also possible for like collective groups of people to come together and totally yeah. revolutionize and change the way that we look at values. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly this was also the beginning of where we started seeing supply chain issues and delays and people not being able to get stuff. But then we also saw the silver lining where, you know, if people weren't able to get things, they were able to kind of mass buy and like share with people in their community or be able to trade with people. Um, so it was really kind of challenging, um, oh, yeah. you know, Taurus. And it was even before the North Node got into Taurus. So things have gotten even more wild in this last year since the North Node got into Taurus and we saw conjunctions and squares almost like preparing us to really think about our long-term goals. Like, I think just on a personal level, you know, going into this transit, I remember saying to myself, like, the most important thing that I do for the next two years is create things that are going to help me come together with other people and also, like, um, have fun. You know, it's all hap it was all happening in my fifth house and it was on my north node. And I knew instinctually with the squares that were going to be coming both to Taurus um, as well as Scorpio in 2021 that it was going to be challenging like my value system and like whether I was willing to put in the work towards the long-term goals, even if I wasn't seeing immediate um, uh, like results and yeah. returns, you know, like financially, right. um, knowing that I was paving the way for some long-term stuff. And um, true that. yeah, I think that was, a, that was a really, really interesting time. It was also a really interesting time in terms of uh, collective groups and people really coming together with both Saturn and Jupiter in the same sign saying, this is what the future could look like if we band together, right? So there was also this kind of initiative on very personal level, because it was within the first decade, um, to start building within our groups. And so kind of building off what you said about like the kind of advanced, you know, people maybe like living in like society and yeah. like living in like metro cities. Advanced. And yeah. then the Amish people, like I could see that the Saturn Uranus Square is a lot of people who live more of an Aquarian lifestyle being like, actually, I think the Amish like have it right. Like right. they're not having to show up to a nine to five. They are sustainable. They grow their own food. They have freedom. And perhaps maybe that more kind of like Uranus and Taurus, like Amish type mm -hmm. lifestyle or people who are more kind of um, country-esque are becoming more curious about what is going on in society and like whether or not they have something valuable that they can offer society. Um, or vice versa. Yeah. It could yeah, be yeah. someone in that environment that listens to like uh, headphones or they listen to like Spotify, right? They're implementing some technology, but then we can also see the squares, yeah. Amish communities getting fined by the government. Yeah, that has been happening. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that blow. So it is the clashes in 90 degree angles are outside influences that do clash. And we've seen this between individual fringe groups and government. And the Saturn Uranus Square has produced a number of really interesting uh, groups that stood up and ended up becoming rebels um, that mm. will forever be <laughs> memorialized in 2021 and 2022. <laughs> you know, this was like the truckers that were like basically yeah. saying fuck you to the Canadian government that yeah. were just driving cost country and they had That's all huge. of their, you know, I mean, what, what did they call them? Like their blockades in a way is what they were calling them. Of just all yeah. the semis and like basically, you know, pushing and saying like, that oh, we're, we're doing this for for your freedom, yeah. we also saw uh, massive strikes going on also with um, airplane pilots who were also 
uh, displaying, I think it was like, was it the Virginia flag? The thou shall not whatever. I don't even know what it is. I didn't even know about there, I can't even I'm remember what it, I'm, I'm going to botch SD. it, but it's got the, the snake on it and it's basically talking about being able to like have your freedom and that you can't infringe on individual rights. Um, so they were hanging that outside of airplanes and we saw like massive delays with uh, flights and all kinds of, oh, there's, you know, delays with the tra traffic towers and there's problems with weather and mm. thousands of flights getting canceled uh, because of weather we had massive people who were basically protesting walking out and, and protesting out, and, yeah. and refusing to to comply with with mandates we'll just leave it at that yeah basically and i i think that's a very understated point you made this is also the aftermath of the blm protest so yeah this really did bring in so much strings of worldwide protests and rebellion and uh it was the seeds. It was the seeds. It was the seeds. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. You know, That's we true. had just seen both Saturn and Jupiter enter into Aquarius together the November prior, November 2020, or December prior. So both Jupiter and Saturn entered into zero degrees of Aquarius at the same time. So I saw that as kind of like a precursor for where we're going. And I've been watching all of these conjunctions in the early degrees of Aquarius being like, this is what Pluto and Aquarius might actually look like. Like we're gonna start seeing where there's gonna be major change and transformation in these areas of our life. Now, if we go forward, and just to kind of echo on that, the 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 I love how you said it's the seeds too. If we think this is all preparing us, and I love how this is happening at the end of the world. This is all preparing us for the 2031 conjunction of Uranus and Saturn at the end of Gemini. So the seeds were sowed when we were born, actually. Like like the seeds that that we were talking about earlier are relative to this new cycle, but we can take that back to the 90s where Uranus conjuncted Saturn 88, right, in Capricorn. Then eventually Uranus came maybe into Aquarius and that first quarter square was the square of Saturn in Taurus in 99 to Uranus in Aquarius. Then eventually we probably had the opposition of Saturn in Virgo to Uranus in Pisces, or in Leo. I remember those transits. That's wild. And then, of course, from that opposition in full moon, we're coming back around to the quarter square of Uranus. And so this is the, the third quarter square before we end what started in the 1988-1990 period. And <laughs> I will say this. the uh, I believe the Saturn-Uranus conjunctions that are going to be taking place in Gemini is going to be about focusing and bringing our attention back on our local communities. Yeah. So where there is going to probably so be true. over the next number of years a total breakdown and we're becoming less connected on a global level or on a national level, we might find that local trade, local um, small mom and pop shops, like, you know, rebuilding, possibly also people venturing back into cities is something that you're going to see a little bit mm. more. So we're not going to see like a lot more focus on communal living or like apartments and stuff like that. Until then, I think we're going to see a lot of people that are going to start venturing out and being closer to nature and having isolation and doing some of that stuff until we start seeing those conjunctions again. We're going to have like, I think like super tech cities. Oh yeah. You know, so and, true. And Smart cities. Yeah. yeah. Like where it's like, you're going to have like a small city where it's not very big, um, but you have all of your local kind of conveniences. I mean, I think I saw somewhere, I think I want to say it was like in Dubai or somewhere outside of Dubai where they're having like these prototypes for these smart cities that they're going to create that are like very narrow and it has like different layers and it has like all these apartment complexes, but there's like a grocery store, an indoor park, like a health center, like all of this stuff. And it's like literally in the middle of the desert and it's very narrow and it can go like miles and miles long. And like you can take a train from one end to the other and it's basically like compacting like a very like large city into a very narrow and like long right. piece of land. Okay. Yeah, so that's there's deep. there's some wild stuff that's gonna come. And I think that whenever you see like the archetype of Saturn, which is like committed, consistent, stable, like the, the older regulated, mm -hmm. you know, uh, generations. And then Uranus and Taurus, which is just like a lot of like volatility, lots of changes, lots of fluctuation with finances and resources um, and a whole new chapter of uh rebels being born yeah. so it wasn't just the truckers uh we also saw this come about with the uh amc stuff and all of like the 
the stock market things where you saw like all of like the ape community <laughs> coming together and pushing to be able to kind of say like fuck you to all of the people who have really been manipulating the markets yeah. for a very long time. Um, and then we saw the uh, the farmers, which is these are interesting, interesting. So food and transportation, I could see that as uh, Venus and Uranus Taurus, but I didn't really think of it as farmers rebelling. Yeah. And, you know, over the last two years, we've seen this uptick of like people being like, it's cool. It's trendy to like knit or like have your own garden or like, you know, learn how to like compost and yeah. things like that, like very like Taurus related mm -hmm. things. I really love that point you made about the more focus on local communities because if we look at 87, if we look at 86, end of 80, or beginning of 88, where we had Uranus and Saturn and Sag, like compared to the 90s versus now, the, the world has expanded considerably. Well, and Jupiter and Uranus conjuncted reach. in 83. And I see that it was yeah, the, in very, Sagittarius. Yeah, the very beginning of like, oh, you can order things from another place and like you oh. can get a magazine and you can order stuff. And like then we saw the birth of like, yeah, the internet that came like in the, you know, late 80s, early mm. 90s. And then we became connected globally. Yes. Right. So we become so detached locally where it's like people don't give a fuck. They're not voting in their local elections. Yeah. You have no idea what's going on. They're not watching local news. They're not supporting local businesses. They go to Walmart. They go to Target. They move out of their city yeah. to make it. Yeah. Right. I love that. Yeah. Instead of like focusing on that's that's genius. And that's that's an yeah, I really I think we that. may see the return of um like a lot more um brick and mortar stores when Saturn and Uranus go into Gemini. I think it's gonna be, you know, what is unusual and different. And if we are seeing that there are shortages or an inability to be connected and buy stuff globally because of more supply chain issues. Uh, perhaps down the road, we're going to realize that it, it does make sense to like really know, okay, do we have a local butcher? You know, do we have a, a local bookstore? I think we're going to see that be like the next big thing where you yeah. can, you can go and you can do that, you know? Mm. And maybe just more focused communities where, and that could be with the advent, a lot of this is going to happen from now until then, whether through social credit scores or integration, but this might be a time where neighbors aren't so disconnected from each other and communities are so much more knowledgeable of who is a part of each local community. It's like the birth of a new society. I think it's going to be new through. languages. I, I could see, yeah. you know, Jupiter, Uranus, new, programming new languages, too. languages mm -hmm. new softwares, new all kinds of like, I mean, technology, like we're seeing it at its most infant state right now. Once yeah. Pluto goes into Aquarius, we're going to see some wild stuff I over love the next that 20 you years. Said that. That's so true. Yeah. We're breaking through out of the infant stage yeah. of technology. That's the best way I've ever heard that put. Because, I mean, we've, we've gone through like a, a whole 30 years, but 30, 40, 50 years, which Just is. Just what we've seen in our lifetime. Right. Nobody knows what a floppy disk is anymore. Until you've had to save your homework on a floppy disk, like, do not raise your voice to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you the know? floppy disk and then the compact floppy disk. Or like a like, home phone or like, you know, the internet used to be a thing where you had to go and you had to get a D, like a CD and you had to put it in your computer and you had to upload to each new AOL or you couldn't be on the home phone because you were waiting for, you know, the like dial -up the dial-up. I mean, dinner, dinner. people don't even know. And I, I mean, in uh, our parents also, like I remember when my parents got like, Nokia, you know, cell phones like in the early 90s and my dad was like this is a big deal. And now it's like we have the most insane like back then like what was just like the most advanced computer now is like in the palm of it's our in hands the and the iPhone. Our so hands. yeah. Yeah, we've seen some crazy stuff already. And soon it's going to be in our retina. <laughs> Hold on, I'm soon ending a gonna call. It's going to be in our DNA. Yeah, Pluto going in Aquarius is yeah. trying to fuse that's technology so and your right. genes. I mean, that's what that is. So that's also very important because that I didn't realize, especially that Aquarian element, you have the celestial, like, god, goddess type thing. But then you also have the cyborg. And I didn't realize that plastic surgery is... Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's like, like, I don't see plastic surgery as something to demonize. Like, oh, you, you got... A different body. I see that as a form of advancement. Like you have, you have natural bodies. You have people who prioritize natural bodies, and then you have people who are like, "No, I'm gonna be a cyborg. I paid for this advancement." It's like literally, you have prosthetic parts 
with human parts, that technically isn't an advancement of humanity. It's creating cyborgs. It's, I didn't realize it's that infant stage of technology that we are going to see, like Candace said, like the infusion of DNA and If you're humanity. willing to do it, though. And I don't think it's yeah. all bad. Like, it could be really good yeah. for health, but we, don't we know, know the world we're in. We so. don't know what it's going to be. We don't know yeah. if it's going to be a chip. We don't know if it's going to be a pill. We don't mm. know if it's going to be, like... I mean, to an extent, we're already seeing a preview because yeah. if we know that you can take a shot that does affect your DNA, that does change or alter your DNA, that's what that is. So I don't. The beginning I don't, stage is the seeds, like she was saying. The yeah, I, I feel like also because Pluto deals with like wealth and and power, we're about to find out that the wealthiest people are going to be the people who have information for the masses, and that is going to be what is going to generate wealth. Um, is the ability to inform others. And so when we look at this from the element of air, we're having Pluto move from a very physical sign of Capricorn where it's been initiating a power grab. Now as Pluto moves into Aquarius, it's not going to be tangible. So I do anticipate there's going to be a lot going on with cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and also like cybersecurity and the cloud. Um, and sovereignty status. We might see a lot of people... Uh, move away from being citizens and being their own sovereign nation, which will create an oversaturation process, which we may not see happen instantly. This could be a little more like the middle end of Saturn, uh, Pluto Aqua, but a lot of this information about tax that has been hidden is going to be more known to people about how to basically create trusts and really, once again, not have to file tax because you're no longer a citizen, you're sovereign. Like these, these type of the change in law that can kind of open up <laughs> these not type of stuff. They're not allowed to happen. It, it, they're we'll not allowed see, to happen. That's the most important part. Yeah. It's possible. They're, so they're, they're already setting the stage to let people know, like those who have like traded and bought crypto and stuff, that that's part of the influx that they're pushing for, for all of this new incentive for the IRS. Like they're going yeah. after people who are... Who are Independent. Yeah. yeah. Do you think they would, because the reason why I love that you said that is the growing amount of people who will start to see they can do this, that what they're not taught, this can bring changes in the constitution, changes in the law. Something you said even before that, like everything about Pluto Aquarius is going to bring stuff that now sounds weird. But it's going to happen, like Candace said, yeah. astrology being outlawed. There's new outlaws or, coming right. for sure. I mean, or Pluto, kind of aspect Pluto is the villain. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The con like the Mars is the villain, but Pluto's really yeah. the villain. Yeah. Pluto is <laughs> like the person who's actually going to be put I mean, well maybe Neptune, Pluto and Neptune. Maybe Neptune gets caught, but Pluto is actually like on the wanted list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you the know? fugitive the outlaw, yep, yep, And yep. Aquarius does rule astrology, and Aquarius also rules future prediction and mass gatherings and other things, and a lot of these things we're going to find out are our rights are going to be infringed upon in terms terms of that stuff and uh yeah, I mean, it could be seen as like terrorist threats to kind of make <laughs> predictions that well, <laughs> prophesizing throughout history has gone through numerous cycles of being considered like the devil's work and yeah. is not like you know, looked at highly in society. Like people have looked down on it. So I kind of look at it as like, fuck it. Like if it ends up being something that becomes illegal and it has to go underground, like maybe that's going to weed out some of the shit TikTok astrologers. No, it will. But when, here's the notion. When you're not of this. capable. Just the most doing important that. thing that she's saying about this, if you put everything in context, is like she said, this has always been something that's been demonized. You had religion that said this is of the devil. You had science that said this is pseudoscientific. Well, religion is dead. Science is trash. What's gonna happen now when all the science that said it's fake and the religion says it is bad, the predictions are more on point. They all come back around and so many people who've proved this are legitimized. The outlawing is going to come from a different place. It's not going to come from science. It's not going to come from religion. It's going to come outright more direct. Like, we know what you're fucking doing. Do this or else. You know what I mean? So. Well, I, I have thought for some time that the Saturn Uranus squares were an intentional kind of disruption of trying to get people to really believe that there is science and then there is pseudoscience and maybe that has been part of the saturn you're on a square it's like if it's real prove it you know make it make it make it you know obvious or or show me proof 
And like we've seen a real rise in like crypto astrology. We've also seen a real rise in like people who are making market predictions using astrology. So that in itself, I think, is a testament. Yeah. Down the road, um, when we think about Pluto and Aquarius, because they see Aquarius being ruled by Uranus, which represents the spirit, right? So I think this has been a, a, a long-term plan to try to disrupt people and get them and their nervous systems to feel so out of control, not stable, not secure, fearful that they're not going to have food, not going to have security, not going to have money, that they're trying to keep people basically to disassociate from their physical body. So they're not um, connecting with others. Mm -hmm. They're not connecting in large groups. Like we know when groups of people come together, we have a raise, a rise in a consciousness, rise yeah. right? And, and vibration raises. So all this isolation, this separation, putting out all this information into the media about facts and science, which we're starting to find out is all bullshit, mm -hmm. that really we've had more deaths that have happened the last several years from overdoses and also depression or suicide than COVID altogether. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's facts. facts. That is out there now. People have, yeah. yeah. Despite, despite at the time narratives that made the impression that you're crazy if you believe that, but it was the truth. And these pressure cookers are now coming out of the collective to, in light of time, show that a lot of these things are always real and we are moving into this next advent. So I just think it's really important to take seriously that, especially those of you with North Node Aqua or Aqua placements, like Pluto and Aqua is going to propel you forward into that leadership position to like embody what it means to because it's really novel in this day and age what it means to be a psychic what it means to even if you're not a psychic to innovate the field you're doing those of you who are innovating track and field plumbing tarot card reading you're getting thrust to step into this unique and weird time and this saturn uranus squares that i love that you mentioned is disrupting that difference between you know what's scientific and what's innovative or pseudo a lot of what uh, has been done to, as a stopgap measure, try and deter people from alternative methods, I think is going to kind of backfire. And well, like, it has backfired. It's been backfired. Look what's happened over the last <laughs> two years. You've seen more people get on the internet than oh, ever before no. because mm -hmm. they've been locked in their homes, which is really showing you in so many ways that you can physically separate humans but that the human spirit is resilient it is willing to connect yeah. so you have all these people who have created content self-help stuff fitness stuff wellness stuff who have taken it upon themselves to put it out into the internet mm -hmm. to be able to support the masses so in the midst of the separation saturn Uranus square there's also been like a rise in consciousness mm -hmm. right we've also seen jupiter and neptune come together in pisces which i think aided yeah. that but I think Pluto and Aquarius is essentially in so many ways going to be them coming in and really trying to destroy the ability to um, self-identify and just blend in and become a part of the masses and willingly give up the things about us that make us individual because at the core of that, it's really stripping us of our ability to be authentic and think for ourselves and question the narrative. So if they're pushing the masses to basically just go along with the status quo and they're um, basically taking like marginalized groups like the truckers or, you know, refugees or people who um, are considered, what is it, domestic terrorists and basically shunning them in society and being like, look, you know, we're going to cut them off from society or from resources and this is what's going to happen to you if you do it. They're priming everyone to buy into that fear because they know when they strip you of some of that authenticity and personal identity, you will disassociate from your spirit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So you're gonna see society go in two extreme ways after these squares, and you're gonna see a lot of people that are gonna suddenly be like, we're homesteading, we have chickens, we're living off the land, we're growing our own food, and then you're gonna hear a lot of people that are gonna be like, I want the social credit score, sign me up. Yeah. Like, you know, put that chip in my fucking hand so I can <laughs> buy my groceries at Whole Foods, fucking bullshit. And I, I mean, can't. The, the the rollout of that is so deceptive, though. It's it's the the the, the, the Saturnian nature of it is. I know you want this. It's not necessarily. It's, it's hard to say. Or no this to is that. what's best for, for everybody. Right. We're doing this for you. You're wrong if you go against it. It's, it's hard to say no to it. You know what I'm saying? And and to do the the other irresponsible homesteads of backwards with the times, which there are going to be examples they highlight of people who do it wrong to mislead you from people who are doing it right. So was it was it Stalin? I think it was Stalin that. 
at one point somebody was interviewing him and there was like a chicken that was like on the ground or like walking around and he picked up the chicken and like roughed up the chicken and ripped its feathers out and then threw the chicken down and then took some feed and put his hand out and the chicken walked right over and the chicken ate from his hand. And Stalin said to the person he was talking to, see how simple it is, you can do whatever you want, but if you control the food and if you are still feeding them and giving them something after they've been mistreated, they're always going to come back. That's so deep. Right? So like in many ways, Saturn can be about the brutal, like cutting off or mistreatment or isolating or whatever. With the square to your honest is being like, if we cut off the food, if we cut off the energy, if we make them freaked out about money, we orchestrate and create these crises, then people are going to be eating out of the palm of our hands. So the people who actually are going to get freedom, the people who are actually going to be wealthy are going to be people who are going to say, fuck the system. I'm and not buying into that. first before they struggle later. Right. And it doesn't have to be struggle, but put in that work. Well, it's about change, it, changing the way that we look at wealth and, exactly. and, and priorities. Exactly. Innovating it. That's, it's just beautiful. And the one thing I love about what you said is the push to ostracize these people and bring people to this extreme division is what's going to push for the extreme terrorism, the extreme rebellion, the extreme activism, the extreme revolution. And those are the seeds that I feel like this square kind of sets up very powerfully. I feel like it's just kind of setting up for like a totalitarian state, you know? And it's like, I don't know, there's that. And then there's like these covert, you know, totalitarians that are like basically coming out and being like in a very, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Seemingly progressive. Well, it's like all these like woke people, you know, that are like, yeah, okay, that's one way to put it. But all these woke people that are basically being covert narcissists saying like, but we're doing this because it's best for you. We want what's best for you. Versus like when you were dealing with like fucking, you know, Nazis in the 40s, they were just straight up being like, no, nah, like we don't we don't want you here. Yeah, basically. You know, so you're you're actually <laughs> seeing that this separation that's going on in society is being intentionally orchestrated. We've seen so many people separate in relationships, families, all kinds of stuff as a result of the division in the last couple of years because they've learned that there's no way to get through to people other than making them feel like an outcast in society and making them feel shut off from their friends, their family, mm -hmm. and now resources that if we create those situations, they will cave. They will. They absolutely will. And it's going to be remarkable to see how the sextile with Saturn and Pisces um continues this narrative i'm so glad you highlighted the 2021 squares because moving from seven degrees to 18 in 2022 is bringing us at the precipice to the end of this narrative and how everything is going to change once saturn goes into pisces and and the blossoming of everything the long-term effects of everything that happened in 2020 we're gonna see happen 2023 2024 okay and it's very important to study these squares in retrospect to see what was happening, especially with like the AMC, you know, all the people who did that, they didn't just go away. There's community that built. We're going to see this again at a higher level unexpectedly. You know, a lot of these things and rebellions that are getting snuffed out, the Uranus fourth house to Saturn is the hidden connections that are happening under the nose that aren't being publicized in the mainstream the protests that aren't being shown yeah. in the news so all of this is bubbling up as a pressure cooker i think that sextile is gonna really highlight that and the square of course to pluto with the light square to pluto to uranus but yeah so the second square we had was in like mid-june of 2021 when Saturn was retrograde and it was in a square to Uranus that was direct and that looked like it was happening around 13 degrees. So it was definitely more like about like individual stuff. Like I think how people were like taking initiative in their day to day to like make changes. I mean, the Saturn Uranus squares and fixed signs are kind of like hitting a wall. You're literally between a rock and a hard place because one part of your life where Taurus is wants to run wild and it's very kind of like up and down because Taurus is sluggish. So it takes a while to build up and then it breaks through and then it takes a while to build up and then it breaks through. With the squares to Saturn, it's been wrangling that in and it's been kind of uh, keeping Uranus, I think, from like running too wild. It's been keeping it kind of tethered. One thing you'll see next year is that there is no tether. As Uranus goes further into Taurus, it's going to start coming into 
Um, conjunction, you know, with Jupiter at some point. We're also going to see the north and the south nodes start coming into a square with Pluto. Um, there is no tether. We will see Jupiter come into conjunction with Uranus. It'll happen briefly next year, and then the exact conjunction will happen in 2024. Where I think for a lot of people, the consistency, the willingness to keep reworking values, to keep building, keep growing, is really going to prove to be incredibly valuable in 2024. But nevertheless, like, yeah, just, I don't know about you, but between a rock and a hard place um, all year long, this was interesting in June because we had uh, eclipse in, in um, Gemini, a Mercury retrograde in Gemini, the North Node was in Gemini, the Sun was in Gemini. It was all trining Saturn. So that was like the way out was what is coming out? What are we talking about? And what is the path forward? You know, Saturn and Aquarius isn't the bad guy. I think the intention has been trying to get us to think about long-term goals um, and kind of getting things in order and making some physical changes to better facilitate that. Beautiful. Um, then we had the final square, which was <laughs> around Christmas time. I remember looking at this in November being like, please, God, don't let there be like Christmas trees being lit on fire and like people throwing gifts like across the room at each other. Uh, but this was happening right around Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually happening on the 24th of December. So that was the last the exact Saturn-Uranus square. And um, Uranus was retrograde, Saturn was direct, which is what we're actually about to have when, when we have the square coming up. Oh, this um, is after Saturn goes direct. Yeah, be Saturn's going to be direct and Uranus is still retrograde. And we're going to have that. And I think Saturn has got a little bit more power just being that it's direct. I mean... The beginning of the second decade versus the end of the second decade. Yeah. Yeah, that's too good. Do you remember anything interesting about the Saturn Uranus squares at the end of December? No, that's a really good question. I know the the focus for me was more the Jupiter going into Pisces. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that really interesting shift where things started to kind of like mellow out before they're getting ready to to blow up again, mm -hmm. and we were starting to see surmounting pressure with Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very interesting. There was a lot of stuff going on then. It's kind of hard to pinpoint. I mean, in November, we had the first lunar eclipse in Taurus. Um, we had Jupiter changing signs. We had a Venus retrograde in Capricorn conjunct Pluto. That fucking sucked. <laughs> that was not fun. And I, you know, looking back, I mean, <laughs> it's because I'm Venus ruled. My, yeah. my natal Venus is in Capricorn. That was not an easy Christmas time into the new year. There was definitely like a lot of things changing, but it's so crazy. I hate to interrupt. That was the one Christmas it, our family had where we felt that someone kind of disrupted the flow. And now we don't want this person to be in Christmas here because we feel like so I didn't realize that until you said that. Yeah. But like that was kind of interesting. Like, well, we still had to go to Christmas, but Is it a woman? Because it was conjunct your moon. It was a it was my Libra cousin. Okay. A male though. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's Gemini Moon too. Okay. Yeah. Cancer rising. But I mean, it kinda did happen because of him. He's staying with us because uh his mother passed. Okay. So yeah, that kinda complicated things. But um it's it's really interesting because just it's less I would say it's less him and just more that whole with the trans it's just that kind of disruption and, and that that came through uh, but I love I, I didn't think about that until you said that now so yeah I can only imagine this next one this next Christmas my sister's married now so we're gonna throw a mini wedding for her and oh, uh, cool. her new husband shout out to Chelsea and Jonathan Lou. My sister said she's officially a catfish now. She's Libra rising, right? Libra rising, and he's Libra sun. Yeah, so they got married. So she's she's Chelsea Lou. She's gonna catfish employers now. <laughs> <laughs> but applies for a medicine job. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. I mean, that was that was the last one technically. Yeah. But I guess the point is, is that if you look at what you've been. Uh, dealing with all through 2021 into 2022 where there was like a part of you that's like okay I want to cut this off or I want to rebel against this and then I also want to commit more to this these themes are coming back very strongly now mm -hmm. um, so if we move forward to where we're at now in 2022 Saturn has been going through the later degrees of Aquarius uh, we saw Mars North Node Uranus conjunction at the end of July that happened that really kind of put more emphasis on Uranus and now here we are in September, getting ready to go into October. 
And we wanted to uh, start talking about this because really you guys are going to start filling this square. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting that the Saturn Uranus square is at 18 degrees again because it is mirroring uh, that North Node Uranus Mars conjunction. Mm -hmm. So I think that's once again something that's important to talk about. The fact that Uranus is retrograding over that degree, Saturn is squaring it. We do see more tension, more conflict. Um, and it's kind of going to be in the skies until probably the better part of at least the end of the year, until mm. we get through Scorpio season. Yeah. We're going to have a, a lunar eclipse in Taurus on November 8th. We're going to do a video for that soon. Um, and that's going to be conjunct Uranus and it'll score Saturn. So those of you guys who are looking around in October being like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it's not just because there's a shitload of planets retrograde or that we're coming out of a Mercury retrograde shadow or that Mars is in shadow. I think it's a Saturn Uranus square, and it's finally uh, asking us where do we break off and move more into freedom or more into uh, minimalism or kind of getting back down to basics in nature with Uranus and Taurus, um, and where do we make uh, more of an effort to focus on networks, goals, unions, um, and collaborating with like-minded people with Saturn and Aquarius. Where has this square been happening for you? Um. I got my MC and my North Node in Aqua and then my Rising in Taurus. So it, the the Uranus is still 12th house to my Rising and the Saturn's after the uh, MC, but it's really just been preparing me for like this new version. It's like I feel this career, this next level of career success coming in and how to identify with it. So I'm releasing, it's like a restructuring kind of. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But I'm looking forward to it. It's it's changed my approach to be more patient, especially with progress planets. So. This has all been in a square to my sun Directly and in now. opposition to my sun, Mercury. I've had, yeah, my sun, Mercury, and Scorpio oh, in the second. Right. Oh, I've had Saturn in my fifth on my north node and Uranus opposed my sun. It's been a fucking nightmare. Wow. It's been a fucking nightmare. But I know that in retrospect, I think probably, you know, because I don't want to talk badly about Saturn. Saturn's been pretty helpful for me in recent years. But I think it's kept it's kept me on track with really thinking about, like, what are you creating and create for the sake of creating, not for uh, immediate results. Mm. You know, you can you can work and you can make money right now or you can be taking the time and making the time and taking a step back from consistently grinding to create stuff that's going to be more fulfilling yeah. um which has been really hard for me because i keep I've, every single time saturn has come back into a square with my sun or my mercury i have a meltdown and i'm like i don't want to do this anymore mm. so i'm realizing that it's just like it's part of the process of, yeah. of being like no you got to keep going <laughs> um and yeah next year i'm gonna see uranus and, and jupiter in opposition to my sun in my eighth house so I'm, I'm anticipating it's going to pay off over the next two years, but I also yeah. kind of feel like it's about creating a life um, that's more about experience and less about uh, materialism and less about substance. So I'm trying to like learn to have experiences rather than things. I like that you said payoff too, because the thing about a third quarter square is that represents the 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 full moon. It's after the full moon, from full from full moon of harvest to allocating crops so the third quarter square is after we've harvested everything and we start to allocate it out and that is the results of our hard work so i think that's going to be so awesome like despite everything that's happening collectively yeah. i think individually every single one of you are going to be coming into the rewards of your hard labor and it's, it's going to be so liberating rewarding coming into that sextile 11th house to uh really change the direction that you prepare to go with i think it's just been wild for the the Pluto and Scorpio generation, yes. for the yes. Saturn and, and Aquarius generation. Uranus and Scorpio, too. Uranus and Scorpio, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Saturn been... Saturn uh, and Leo. <laughs> Pluto and Leo. Pluto, a lot Pluto of Pluto Leo. and Leo people oh, yes. are like, yes. oh my God, what the fuck am I going <laughs> to oh <my> do? <laughs> like, so true. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, so yeah. Weird. I think as like a Pluto and Scorpio place person, I'm just kind of like, so what's the worst thing that could happen? Did you die? <laughs> right. Like, right, did okay, you die? Like, but did you die? Yeah, yeah. but did you die? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I, wow. um, I'm i not going to count my chickens before they hatch, though, because I know that this eclipse that's coming, is, it's exactly in opposition to my Pluto. Mm. So I'm, yeah, I'm real excited right for there. that. I mean, I, that's like the kill shot. So 
Yeah. I think the shot is coming from you though. <laughs> no, no, towards towards. I'm just waiting to get. I'm just waiting to get fucking canceled. Like that's the mm. thing that I've been like thinking about. Nice. I mean, I, I haven't gotten like any like I haven't had any strikes on YouTube or anything. Right. I, I try to keep my channel like super like middle ground. I try not to go off on stuff. I wish I could say a lot more. So I, I've been kind of tinkering with the idea of like, do I go to Rumble? Like, do I go right. and create an astrology or like a Patreon after dark or like something? Or do I like exclusive? Like, I just know. like want to go and do astrology without my face and distort my voice and like Yo. basically become Hades mode. Become, <laughs> become like the oh. anonymous of astrology and start That'll telling be. people like what the fuck is really going we, on. Okay, we, we need to do this. You need to do this now. This is, I really want to. Could I do so astrology? Good. And I'm, like, well, the problem is, is my voice and my my body is so. You can just self-identify. Like you can just put like a dark shape. I just so want to wear like a big like rubber rabbit mask or something, and then just like distort my voice and then yeah. start doing like truth astrology. You need to do that. That'll be amazing. If you see anyone like that come out, <laughs> it's totally not her. It's just a coincidence. Okay, but. it's either going to be that or an OnlyFans. So it'll be one of two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Follow her uh, on OnlyFans for the truth <laughs> astrology. Can you imagine? <laughs> that would actually be really funny to go yeah. on OnlyFans and just like do astrology. To do astrology? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be genius. Just do astrology in a fucking rubber mask. That'll be fucking genius. I'm sure that's like somebody's kink. Somebody's yeah. into like nerdy astrology girls. <laughs> in fact yeah I, you just inspired me to do a topless topless tarot I'm waiting for it I'll be magic, I'll be one of the first subscribers tarot. to be like <laughs> I'll just basically do it just topless just with the six I could pack. never do topless tarot like I said my, my, right, my tattoos to... are too identifiable but I, I joke about cake sitting though that's like something I would do word that okay. sounds like fun <laughs> That's my second health stellium with Pluto. That's yeah. like, I can make money sitting on cakes. Oh, I'm sitting on my ass all day doing readings. I might as well like make somebody happy by sitting yeah, on a cake. Yeah, yeah, you'll make a For lot of $500, you can pick your cake and I'll put your name on it and I'll sit on it. That's deep. That's deep. That's the highlight of a lot of people's day right there. Welcome to the future. Somebody was telling me the other day that their, uh, their client is making $40,000 a month just like taking photos of her feet. I was just, okay, my Taurus friend, my like, Taurus Like literally, guy all she does is put like whipped cream on her feet. I or literally she was her nails just about or... to say this. My Taurus guy friend was telling me that dudes will pay yeah. him for just feet pics. And he was yeah. like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah. Holy shit, he has a Pisces moon too. I didn't even realize that. That's fucking hilarious. Feet, yeah. I didn't know that was like a thing. <laughs> or maybe like Venus Neptune placements. <laughs> My feet are too identifiable, too. There's tattoos on my feet. Fuck. Mm, There's no tattoos on my butt, though. So, mm. I mean, not yet. No! <laughs> <laughs> never say never. <laughs> Until then. Uh, with that. Um, with that being said, make sure you join level three. <laughs> <laughs> or join the OnlyFans. <laughs> when it comes to I am waiting. <laughs> I feel like you like I feel like the rubber mask thing is gonna be like the next fetish. It'll be like a furry fetish. Yeah, or just being anonymous, like like that, bringing that back and uh, doing things. People having whole careers where they never show their face. I'd love to do that. I dream that of is that. So amazing. That is so amazing. Like uh, <laughs> I think we might see an influx of that. Like that'll be lit. And then you find out later, later, like, that was who that was? You know Fuck. what I mean? <laughs> I'd probably have a bigger astrology career being anonymous right. than being myself. Oh, my God. Because I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, she's cute. She looks like a Cabbage Patch doll. And she's just talking about the stars and the planets. But if I was, like, in stealth mode and I'm just like, yes. the queen's going to die, people yes. would be like, what the fuck? And it comes true. <laughs> Which oh, I've said for a long time. Yeah, she's been did. dead for a while. It's just, it's just part of the Illuminati process. No, but, but, like, that is actually fact. Like, if you were anonymous, you would be so much more popular. Yeah, I know. That's so interesting. <laughs> I'll get some gloves and a mask. I'm right on it. Oh, my gosh. You should even do Could something. Could I do it in, like, a ski mask? You should diss yourself. Be like, I don't like Candace. I'll just talk shit, I'll just talk shit about everybody uh, yeah. so nobody knows who it so is. So nobody knows who it is. I'll just talk shit about everybody. I'll yeah. pick on my favorite few people to pick on, but uh, okay, that's what's up. And then we'll talk about it on the podcast. Did you hear that guy talk about you? <laughs> <laughs> Destroy one career to build another. Great. 
Sounds perfect. Oh, Sounds like me, actually. Yeah. Right, dude. Phoenix Rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, shit. Well, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I hope you're celebrating the end of the world. Saturn Uranus Square. Uh, take note world. where there's pressure and tension going on in your chart. Uh, just know that it's wrapping up what's almost two years of... Uh, yeah, toppling old things down in your yeah. life and uh, rebelling and further committing in other areas. Uh, hopefully you, you like this this podcast, this channel. We're getting up there in terms of podcasts. We're reaching like the mid to late 80s now. Uh, join mm -hmm. our memberships, join our lives, leave us comments, sharing is caring. It helps us get into the algorithm. We appreciate you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Mm -hmm.